Well, good morning again. It's great to be with you all. And uh, weren't the kids great? Let's, let's say thank you to them again. And to Delaney Kinney, who led us. You know, she had knee surgery on Friday, and, and she's a trooper. So thanks, Delaney, for that. Uh, yeah, that's very appropriate. Uh, kids help us really help us get into the whole Christmas season thing, don't you think? And, and of all the things that I love uh, about kids helping us is church, kids, Christmas productions, because they're awesome. And a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting around at home, and we were, my family, we were retelling some of the stories of the uh, awesome Christmas programs we've been a part of and our kids have been a part of through the years. And, and they're all great, but, but there's one. There's one that kind of sticks out, and it happened in Colorado, and, and it involves a little guy, well, I'm going to call him uh, Jackson, uh, you know, because his parents, I'm still friends with them, and I don't, I don't want them to know, right? So it was much like this. The kids' choir was singing. We had steps that led up to our stage that sort of served as risers, and, and the kids are there, and Jackson is on the end. And the thing about Jackson is he's 50% taller than every other kid his age, so you notice him, right? And, and he's out on the edge, and the music starts, and the music's going, and Jackson, he likes music, I guess, because he just starts to move. You know, and that's okay. He just starts grooving, and you can tell he's a little oblivious to everything else that is happening with the rest of the kids. He's doing his own thing, and he's just grooving, and he's got this thing going. And then pretty soon, he grabs his shirt tail, you know, because you got to have something to hold on to when you're grooving, I guess. And as the music went and kept going, he's getting more and more into it, and pretty soon the shirt starts coming up, <laughs> right? And, and as the song went on, the shirt, shirt came up a little higher, a little bit higher, and as the shirt got higher, the parents, you know, the mom and dad are shrinking in their, in their seat, <laughs> and he's just into it. And sure enough, by, by the time the song was over, Jackson's got the shirt up over his head, and he is feeling it. And we were ready to celebrate after that, right? <laughs> Eggnog sales spiked 30% at the uh, local grocery store that night. That's what kids do. They help us get this whole Christmas season. But, but they do more than that. Kids can actually help us get the message of Christmas. There, there's something about kids and there's something about the approach of children that makes them really helpful to us getting the message of Christmas. We've been talking about it ever since Kent kicked off our series uh, with this counterintuitive idea, that this upside-down message that God has come to earth, that He has brought a Savior in the form of a child for us. And there's something about kids that can help us get that, that message the one we sing about at this time of year. You know, unto us a child is born. A child who's the Son of God. And, and we talked a couple of weeks ago about, about how this child, Jesus, is more than just a nice gesture from God. Because this child brings with him the opportunity, the ability for us to be released, forgiven, freed from our sin. When the angel was announcing to Joseph, we saw these words a couple of weeks ago, uh, and trying to encourage him, don't, don't freak out about what's happening in your life. He, he said this, she, meaning Mary, the child's mother, she's going to give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And we talked about the message of Christmas being that, that you can be forgiven. You can be freed from your acts of sin, but also, also from that, that internal rebellious nature that we have that drives us away from God and leads us to do those sinful things. And that's the message. And, and again, there's something about kids that helps us see this, get this, this message. And the message leads us to the mission of Christmas. Jason talked about it last week. He talked about how now that Jesus has come, now that there's the opportunity to be forgiven for your sins, it means that God is now in the business of reconciling people to Himself. 
And he's bringing together God and his people. And he's doing it through Jesus. And we saw this verse in Colossians that says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, in Jesus. And through him, through Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And he does this by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And so this ability, this opportunity to be forgiven, it results in this mission that God is now in the business. He's reconciling his people to himself. But as Jason told us, it it goes beyond that. That God wants this message to spread, so He's, he's reconciling people to people. That, that now you have the ability, the opportunity through the grace and forgiveness of God to be reconciled to others. In other words, God wants this message to spread. He wants the message of His peace and His joy and His love and His forgiveness, He wants it to spread, to keep going. Like we sing, peace on earth, mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. And so when the angels come and make this announcement to the shepherds that that the Savior has been born, they say this, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. In other words, God intends for His ways the the reconciliation, the peace, the love, the joy, the righteousness that He brings and offers to people, He intends that to spread. Peace on the earth. Joy on the earth. Love and righteousness and justice among the people on earth. And He does this by bringing His kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to earth in the person of Jesus. Heaven comes to earth like never before. The kingdom of heaven, we have to remember, is not just a place out there that you go to one day. The kingdom of heaven, it's also right here. Right here, it's everywhere where God's ways are pursued, where God reigns where His love and His justice and His righteousness and His mercy, where it prevails, here on earth as well. That's His goal. That's His plan. We know this because this is the way Jesus taught us to pray, right? Thy will be done, where? On earth as in heaven, both. And so that's the message of Christmas, the mission of Christmas that God has come in the person of Jesus. He's brought the kingdom of heaven to earth. He offers it through His blood, and He intends for it to spread, and you can be part of it. That's what Christmas is all about. Heaven, the King of heaven, the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. All right, so what does all this have to do with children? I've been saying there's something about children that helps us get, that helps us receive, understand this message of Christmas. And, and it's found in some words that Jesus said after he grew up. And it's found in Matthew chapter 18. And Jesus, one day, he's got his disciples gathered around him, and he makes this bizarre statement. It says, he called a little child to him, and he placed the child among them, and he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples, his closest followers, and he says, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, all that God is doing, the the whole Christmas message and mission, if you want to enter into that, you've got to become like little children. You have to take the approach of little children. Uh, In Luke's gospel, Luke records the words of Jesus this way, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So if you want heaven, 
if you want God's will on earth as in heaven, if you want to be a part of God's family, if you want to be on His team, if you want to be involved with what He's doing in the world, if you want everything that this whole Christmas season is about, Jesus says you have to become like little children. You have to take the approach of a little child to have it. There's something about children that help us receive, get, enter into the message and the mission of Christmas. And today, you know, if you're here and you're just enduring Christmas, you know, you're not really enjoying it. I, I, honestly, I've had more than one person tell me this week, more than one, I just can't wait for it to be over. I just can't wait for it to be over. That's you today because of whatever's happening in your life. Uh, let me encourage you that there might be something in here for you today, something that can give you hope and rekindle your joy about being a part of the message of Christmas. And it comes with taking the approach of a child. So, so what does it mean? What does it mean to become like little children? What does Jesus mean? Well, I've heard a lot of messages over the years on this topic, and, and they're all very similar. You, usually, someone says, listen, we have to be like little children, or our, we have to have childlike faith, and so they pick a characteristic of children and say, we ought to be like this. So, kids are super innocent and pure. We ought to be like that. Or, kids are super cute. Well, they don't usually say that. We should be super adorable and cute like children. Or, children are full of joy and sincerity, so we ought to be like that with God. That's what they think. When I hear that, you know what I think? Have these people ever had children? <laughs> or been around children? Right? I'm sure my parents thought I was very adorable when I brought the garden hose into the house and watered it, right? Yeah. Or when I drank the whole bottle of baby lotion or baby bath, had to go to the hospital. I'm sure that's what they were thinking. A couple of weeks ago, Heidi was telling us about one of her daughters who was a toddler and just very matter-of-factly went up to her younger sister and whoosh, off went the ponytail. Oh, and I'm sure she was very sincere as she did it. I don't know. Right? Innocent. That's what I was thinking the times my son threw a tantrum and had to be carried out of the grocery store under one arm, kicking and streaming, you know, kidnapping! <laughs> I made that part up. That's, that's not real. When people talk like that, the assumption is that kids constantly embody these positive characteristics, but they don't, right? And I blame Facebook for us thinking this way. Actually, I blame you for the pictures you post of your grandchildren and your nieces and your nephews and your kids on Facebook. I mean, we look through your pictures and all we see are well-dressed, behaved, adorable children. But you lie. <laughs> Where are the rest of the pictures? You know, another diaper explosion, click. Or... Selfie, me and my little guy, he's a biter, bites everyone at school. You know, you don't do that. All right, I digress, but you get the point. Jesus, he, he's not saying that to enter, to receive the kingdom of heaven, we should, and then fill in the blank with your favorite characteristic of a child. That's not what he's saying. Another common approach, though, to this idea of what it means to be a little child is, is to say, you know, the thing about kids, they don't think right? They don't, they don't worry about stuff. You can tell them anything and they'll believe it. You know, like, yeah, hey, you know that hamster that escaped? Yeah, we have no idea what happened to it. It was a mean little hamster. But if you are a thinker, that approach doesn't work. To, to, to think that what Jesus wants you to do in approaching God is to, to not think, that's not it either. So what does Jesus mean when He says we need to become like little children? 
When Jesus said, become like a little child, He wasn't talking about the characteristics of a child. He was talking about the status of a child. The status. And and we know this because the, the very next thing He says, the very next verse is this, therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever takes the lowly position... Another translation says, a humble place like a child. That's the one who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Things were different then. Children had no status. They they had no rights. They they didn't have any rank. They they had no achievements, no degrees, no, no wealth, no wisdom. Right? They didn't have anything. Nothing to show nothing to rely on. As a group, children were the most insignificant people in their culture. I know it's different from us, you know. We have participation trophies. Our our kids are significant, right? They take private lessons on taking private lessons for whatever it is they're they're interested in. We value them. We we lift them up. Not so in Jesus' culture. They were just kids. And so Jesus says, these ones, these ones that in in the eyes of people are the most insignificant, Jesus says, these are the most significant ones in the kingdom of heaven. These are the ones who've got it right. Because these little ones, they don't have anything else that they rely on when they come to God. When when they come to God, they don't bring anything with them. They don't bring their reputation. They they don't bring their achievements. They they don't bring their history of being good. They, they, They don't. They don't have anything else that you and I would look at and say, oh, God should let them in. They just come. And Jesus says there's something about that. If you'll take that approach that you will enter, you will receive the kingdom of heaven. Because they don't have anything else to rely on. See, that's what the disciples wanted. They wanted to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's how this whole conversation in Matthew 18 got started. If you look back at verse 1, it starts with this. At that time, the disciples, they came to Jesus and they asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? We want to be the best. So tell us what to do. Tell us what we need to achieve. Jesus, what do we have to accomplish? How much do we have to know? How should we serve? What should we do so that we'll be the best, we'll be the greatest? And, and you can imagine then their reaction, this group of guys who want to win, right? They want to conquer. They want to be best. And Jesus just takes a little child. And, and I imagine that he took his time, and the guys are standing there like, what are you doing? And he brings this little one and sets him right in the front of him and says, these are the ones. Be like this. You want to be great? You want to be significant? You you should think first, he says, about entering the kingdom of God. Did you notice that? The disciples said, what does it take to be the greatest? Jesus says, here's how you enter. Right? They they were concerned with greatness. Jesus said, why don't we talk about entrance? (laughs) And the way that you come, the way that you approach is like a child. And this means letting go of everything you think that you need to approach God. It means coming to God empty-handed, open-handed, not bringing anything with you. You know, nothing that you think will boost your importance or your acceptance level in the eyes of God. Now listen, this is good news, my friends, because it means you don't have to. You don't have to have a reputation. You don't have to have a long list of achievements. You don't have to have a high level of knowledge to come to God. In fact, He wants you to come 
empty-handed, open-handed, like a child. And so it means letting go and not relying on your goodness or your religiousness or your, your reputation or how smart you are. It means not bringing anything with you. It really means humbling yourself, lowering yourself, humbling yourself to the point that you can recognize God in a baby, right? A king in a manger. A need in yourself to be freed and forgiven for your sins. And this requires change. That's what Jesus said. It says right there in the middle, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children. Meaning, our, our natural bent isn't to approach God like children. Our natural bent is similar to the disciples who said, man, show us what to do to be best. We'll do it. We'll try. And Jesus says, no, you have to change your way of thinking about what it takes to enter into the message of Christmas, the kingdom of heaven come to earth. It's not about you. It's not about what you can accomplish. It doesn't have to be. It's about Him. It's about the gift of God through His Son, Jesus. And so until you change your way of thinking about your self-righteousness or your self-reliance, your dependence on your image, your way of thinking what is great in God's eyes, until you change that and become like a little child and recognize you have nothing else to bring to God, then, then you'll enter the season. You'll enter the message. You'll receive the mission of Christmas, which is the kingdom of heaven come to earth in the person of Jesus. And listen, the reason this is good news is that this brings joy. This is what brings joy, real joy, to the season, believing in Christmas. Because you realize it's not about keeping up appearances. It's not about being perfect. It's not about knowing everything. It really is about believing, believing Christmas. So, we become like little children when we let go of everything that we think we need to come to God. We take the approach of a child when we come to Him empty-handed, open-handed, humbled, grateful even, and believing. And during this series, Believing Christmas, we've been telling you that this Christmas message is counterintuitive. It's upside down. It's not the way we would write the story. God coming to earth, right? A king coming as a baby. But when you think about it, it makes sense. It really does make sense. It makes sense that we would come to the kingdom of heaven as children because that's how the king of heaven came to us as a child. It makes sense that we would approach him like children because he approached us like a child, that we would humble ourselves to come to him because he humbled himself to come to us. It was Paul who wrote these words about Jesus on this subject. Talking about Jesus, he said, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped or to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. When God wanted to reach to you, when God wanted to reconcile you to Himself, when God wanted to make you part of His plan to advance His purposes around the world, He did it by first humbling Himself and becoming human. And He shows us the way. He shows us the way to find Him and to believe. And it's by humbling ourselves, by coming empty-handed, open-handed, not, not trying to bring anything else with us when we stand before God. And this morning, I want to ask you again if you will believe this. This is the best news in the world, people, that God has come for you. You can be forgiven and reconciled and filled with His purpose. And all you have to do is come.
believing. And so if you haven't ever in your life before said to God, I believe the message, I'm going to encourage you to do that. You know, you just can do that right where you are when we pray. I'll give you a moment just to say that to God. But there's something else I want to ask you to do, and and it's about choosing. I, I want you to choose a moment this week. Maybe it'll be today when we're done with the services. Maybe it'll be Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or some other time this week. I want you to choose a moment where you will approach God with open hands, with empty hands, just quietly between you and Him, and tell Him, tell Him again that you believe. Uh, maybe this morning when we're done, you, you want to just come up here to the stage and, and, and use the manger as a symbol and just stand here just for a moment and open your hands and say, God, I believe, right? Maybe, maybe you want to choose a time during the, the worship cycle, the worship season of Christmas Eve where you're going to stand before God and you're going to say, here I am, empty-handed, I believe. For me, it'll be Christmas Eve late at night. That's when it usually happens for me. Once everything's done and everybody's gone home and I'm at home and everybody else has gone their way or gone to bed, there's a moment always, it's quiet, and I choose that moment to be when I tell God again, I believe, and I open my hands and receive the joy of Christmas. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, but it takes choice. Don't let it just happen. Choose your moment. Pray with me this morning, will you?